Help me, I'm clipped. Hey there, this is Anmesh and today we'll understand what clipping is and how to get rid of it in Lightroom. Getting rid of clipping helps you recover more details from your images and thus making your images more expressive. For example, skies in your landscape, but it's not just that, there's a lot more to it. So without any further ado, let's get started. But before we begin, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we bring you the latest tutorials, tips, tricks and updates from the creative community every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. So do consider subscribing. So without any further ado, let's get started. So what is clipping? If you don't already know, don't worry. According to Wikipedia, which my professor seldom believes, clipping is a result of capturing or processing an image where the intensity in a certain area falls outside the minimum and maximum intensity which can be represented. Sounds complex? Let me make it simple for you. Now, what is clipping? Sometimes you might have observed some parts of your image are too bright or too dark that they don't show any details. Clipping happens when some parts of your image, some areas of your image are too bright or too dark to show any details. That's when clipping happens. For example, you have an image of a landscape and the sky is too bright, so much so that you cannot see the clouds in the image. In that case, we can say that the sky is clipped. Or, for example, you have a person standing and behind that person there is the source of light. Or, for example, it's a beach and the light is coming from behind, it's a sunset and the man or the woman is standing and you're clicking picture of that person. More often than not, the picture, would, picture of the person would be black. Why? It's so dark that it doesn't show any details. And in that case, you can say that the person is clipped. You get the idea. Now let's understand clipping through images. So for example, look at this image. There are some areas in the image, it's the image of my sister by the way, and some areas of the image are too bright that there are no details, for example, this area. So how do I see which areas are clipped? So easy. There's a shortcut in Lightroom, it's called J. Press J. Just uh, press O. Oh. We need to go to the develop module first. So make sure you go to the develop module. How do you go to the develop module? Press D. And there you go to the develop module. Also, you can click here to go to the develop module. Now, once you are in the develop module, press J to see the areas that are clipped. For example, the areas that are painted in red are clipped by highlights. The areas that are painted in blue would be clipped by shadows. For example, some areas are black, uh, dark. Let's, let's me, let me make it dark for you. Now, the areas that are painted in blue are clipped because it's dark. Now, let's look at another example of the highlights and the shadow slider. For example, let's look at this. In this, as you can see, the sky is very bright and that's why this has gone dark. So I want to bring back the details both in the sky and uh, the butterfly. So how do I do that? Let's go back to the develop module and once you're in the develop module, pull down the highlight slider. So we have got a little bit of blue in the sky now and then pull up the shadows slider. Now, now you see there's a lot of details in the darkness. Now. Uh, as I taught you in the previous class, set the white on black point. How do we do that? Press and hold shift, double click on the whites and press and hold shift, double click on the black and your black will be set. Now, how much time did this take? 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Now see the difference. So this is the before, this is the after. Okay, one essential tip time. To see the before and after, all you need to do, you need to press the backslash button, shows you the before, press it again shows you the after. Now let's look at some other examples. So we are done with this. Let's look at this one. So I've already edited it for you. Let's reset that. And uh, for example, let's not reset the cropping. Let's reset the tone. So if you want to reset an area specifically for your, say you want to reset the tone, say you want to reset, okay, the saturations, all you need to do, you need to double click on the tone and everything in that area will be reset. Now, I want more details in the skies. What do I do? Bring down the highlights. As you can see, more details have emerged in the cloud. Now, I want a little bit of detail in the shadows in the buildings. So bring up the shadows a little bit, not too much just a little bit 
and we are good to go set the white point or the black point you know how to do it already double click sh hold shift double click okay uh, hold shift double click hold shift double click you know what today I'm using my trackpad instead of mouse so it's kind of becoming difficult for me so uh, let's go back to the library and let's look at some other examples so yes this is my favorite example as you can see there's no detail on the camel so how do we get the detail highlights in the shadow slider but before we do that a simple tip there is also a crop tool in Lightroom so how do we access that this one you can click it or you can press R you can crop it you can straighten it some basic stuff you can rotate this and do stuff like that let's reset that to straighten it there's a simple tool you can click the straighten tool and drag on a straight line in this example it's the horizon so it automatically straightens your image now press enter it's cropped down very simple I've already did it for you you cannot see any detail in the sky right so bring down the highlights whoa little bit of detail there now see the magic let me increase this Ooh. this is magic this is insane isn't it now you can always go ahead and increase the white balance and set the black point and the white point which makes the image pop out uh, beautifully so we are done with it now let's look at some other examples too I know there are a lot of examples to look at now it's not just the skies okay it's not just the subject and the sky there's a lot more to it let's look at this example that I clicked very recently and uh, okay so this was before now as you can see the highlights are too much so much so that there's no detail in the mosque uh, just for just so you know this is Haji Ali Darga in Mumbai and if you want to see a little bit of detail simple bring down the highlight slider and we are good don't do it too much it kinda looks eh, flat okay so keep it a little bit this and it's a good practice to always have the J key on so that the the clipping that mask that that indicator always have the indicator on so that you can see which areas are clipping so as you can see as I increase the highlights it shows me that the areas in red are clipping that it's becoming so bright that it doesn't have any details on the other hand if I decrease the highlights this uh, red painted area is going away so just stop at the point where the reds just go away now let's understand clipping from a histograms perspective for that we need to switch images a little bit so in this image as you can see there's a lot of clipping going on in the background in the sky there's a lot of clipping on obviously we can bring the highlights down and save it but I wanted to explain you a little bit about the histogram now as you can see in the histogram on the right side there is a rise now what is histogram as I told you in my previous video histogram shows you the tonal range now on the left side you have the darks on the right side you have the brights or the brighter areas the 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 darker areas as you can see these are the graph the the higher the graph the more the intensity of that shade for example as you see in this image some areas are too bright so that's why as you can see in the right we have a huge rise now when the rise when this rise touches the extreme end of the histogram that's when you see clipping it doesn't matter which side it touches even if it does touch the left side for example let's decrease it. it's touching the left side you can see clipping in the opposite way so that's clipping through an histogram if it touches the right clipping if it touches the left clipping for a good image you just need to make sure that the tonal range is just about to touch the end but it's not touching now let's look at a backlit portrait sometimes you click portraits of your friends or your uh, clients and sometimes you might want to click backlit portraits what is a backlit portrait portraits in which the light source is in the behind instead of in front as in traditional methods so I click this in one of my trips of one of my friends he's actually my senior and let's turn off the clipping indicator as so to speak now what do I do bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows also when you bring up the shadows it looks nice but the darker areas as you can see the hair the beard the 
you know the nikon strap nikon has not paid me okay for this uh, so it just kind of fades away so all you can do to get rid of it is pull down the blacks or set the black point and we are good to go one last example and after that i'll talk about how can you use clipping to your advantage Yes, there are some artistic ways in which you can use clipping. See, rules are meant to be broken and it has to be broken to bring about a change, right? So uh, let's look at one last example. So this one, I had also had other, uh, other examples, but the time is not too much and I know you're getting bored. So as you can see, there's not too much detail in the sky. We can bring down the highlights and we can bring up the shadows and voila. We have details in both of the areas. Also, we can set the black point and the white point and stuff like that. Okay, let me show you an interesting stuff. Now, when I was clicking this photo, I just didn't notice one of my friends there because it was so dark and I just didn't notice one of my friends standing here and clicking a picture for himself. Listen, as much as I would love him for this picture, he's a distraction. No denying the fact, I'm so sorry. So, so how do I get rid of him? Is there a way in Lightroom that I can get rid of this distraction? Yes, there is. So all you need to do, go one is to one, zoom, zoom it, one is to one. So, yeah, this is Facebook comments. Okay, so let's, so let's zoom in and select the spot removal tool. So select this and you simply, what do you have to do? You have to paint over him and voila it just removes him using a sample now this has done a really terrible job of doing that so we need to give lightroom a perfect sample to replace this area so let's click on this uh, and let's find a replacement so let's see where it's taking sample from so this is not a correct place to sample from so let's move the sample to an area which matches that area so i think this would be a nice area also you need to make sure that it lines up so before we make sure and before we do it properly let's zoom in a little bit and do the editing stuff so that it lines up neatly so a little bit up and let's just leave it and it has done a wonderful job to replace the distraction I'm so sorry I'm, I'm just so sorry okay of course, we can do this much better in Photoshop, but if you don't want to go out of Lightroom and you're too lazy or <laughs> lazy to open Photoshop and do it intricately, accurately, of course you can do that. Nobody would recognize it. Let's press enter and we are good. Can you actually tell that it has been removed unless I tell it to you? No, right? But if you're well versed with Photoshop and Lightroom, you'll just tell it one snap. Now that's where Photoshop kicks in and that's why we'll discuss in the next class or next to next class how to jump to Photoshop from Lightroom and how to edit pictures externally and then come back, back to Lightroom. So there's a way of doing it, we'll discuss it in the next video. Also one big tip before I discuss the artistic ways in which you can use clipping is that whenever you come across a flat image like this, whenever you think that this image is looking quite flat, there is an underused tool which people most often don't use in Lightroom and that is the contrast tool. Just increase the contrast and look what it does to your image. It just makes it amazing. It just makes it pops out. So pop out <laughs> some grammatical mistakes here and there so for example if you come back to this image and if it looks flat to you let's bring down the highlights if it looks flat to you you can just increase the contrast and it will make it look pop out now that's one of the ways to make in flat images beautiful also let's look at another example so the first image that we done for first image that we did uh, let's bring this film strip down and uh, yes it's not coming down okay let's bring this film strip down quickly you don't disturb me and increase the contrast just a little bit and yes it does a wonderful job of making the image pop out so last but not the least i have something to discuss with you rules are meant to be broken now clipping can be used to your advantage in artistic ways you break the rules there are rules in lightroom that you need to break look at this image look at this image in this image i used clipping artistically to bring the camels pop out to make the camels pop out now everything clips press j just everything clips the whole background clips but tell you what it looks beautiful let me show you the before of this image how does this look do you like this image or do you like this image 
So that wraps up our class today. Remember, you need to show details both in shadows and highlights. You need to get rid of clipping in Lightroom, but also the rules are meant to be broken. So don't be afraid to break rules. And who knows, maybe you'll come up with something very creative that the world will want to see. This is Unmesh signing off and I'll see you guys in my next video. Do consider subscribing and thank you. Thank you so much for watching.